Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Fuel Up with Teen Battle Chef. We are back with another week of delicious recipes. My name is Chef Anastasia. And just a reminder, I know there's a lot going on in the world, but we are still meeting every Tuesday at 4.15 p.m. over Zoom. And today I'm super excited because we are making one of my favorite breakfasts, chocolate oatmeal. And I'm also excited because cooking along with me is my Team Battle Chef Ambassador, Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Hi, how are you? Good. Why don't you introduce yourself to everyone? Okay, um, my name is Melissa. Um, I'm 16 years old. I'm from the Bronx, and I go to Landmark High School. Awesome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be cooking with you. I see Mary Mitchell is joining in, so we'll give them a second to join. But while they are joining, why don't we remind everyone how to keep things clean and safe in the kitchen. So, what do you remember about that, Melissa? Um, I'm not gonna try to look at the PowerPoint, but- Oh, you I know can. To, <laughs> I know to put up your hair, um, wash your hands, um, like have a clean space, like wash everything down around you. Right, right. Um, don't like touch your like hair or anything that like has germs on it naturally, like your phone and stuff like that. Good point. Yeah, that's all I remember. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, no, that was perfect. We have our hair tied back so none of our hair falls in the food. We had we've washed our hands for at least 20 seconds with warm, soapy water. We also, if we're wearing long sleeves, we want to roll those sleeves up so it doesn't get in the way. And like you said, you want to keep your workspace nice and neat and clean. And also, if we are working with a knife, which we are today, maybe if you're cutting up some fruit for your oatmeal, we want to keep it at the top of our cutting board with the blade facing away from us when we're not using it. And if we're walking around with that knife in the kitchen, we want to keep it at our sides, right? So if you guys can see me at my side and I'm going to let everyone know that I'm walking behind with a knife. So I'll say something like behind with a knife and warn everyone I have a knife. Also, we want to keep it fun, right? So if anyone's cooking along with a buddy, ask them to join you right now so we can get the party started. Thank you, Melissa, for reminding everyone. So I see Mary Mitchell is in the house. Hi, Mary Mitchell. Are you cooking along today? Is anyone cooking along? If anybody from Mary Mitchell also wants to sign in, we have a sign in sheet I'm putting in the chat. So you could put, you know, the name of the school. I know it says name of a student, like individual names. You can just put how many people are joining. So how many students are in your classroom? I have a sign-in sheet that I just put in the chat. So it'll ask you for name, for age, for grade, for school, things like that. It'd be great if you guys can sign in there. All righty. So as I said, we are making chocolate oatmeal today. So let's go through exactly what we need to make our chocolate oatmeal. So I'm gonna take you guys down to my chef zone. And first things first, we need a saucepan. I have a small saucepan right here because we are making this on the stove. So that's what we'll need to make the oatmeal. But what ingredients are we going to need? Of course, we need some oats. I have old fashioned oats and that's just a half a cup. This is going to make one serving. So a half a cup of oatmeal. I have a quarter cup of water which reminds me I have my milk in the fridge. And we need how much milk? I have a half a cup of regular whole milk that I kept in the fridge. So that's just a half a cup. And then what's the chocolate element of this whole thing, Melissa? Um, unsweetened cocoa powder. That's right. So I have a tablespoon of unsweetened cocoa powder. And then I have a little bit of salt because every sweet needs a little pinch of salt to balance it. 
And then I'm topping, oh wait, backtrack. We are gonna sweeten our oatmeal with some honey or some maple syrup, if you guys have. And then I love fruit with chocolate, right? So we have, I have some raspberries here. And I love a little crunch on my oatmeal. So I have some nuts, I have walnuts. So that's what I'm using. Are you using anything different in yours? Um, I'm gonna add banana and strawberry. And I would add nuts, but on the contrary, I'm allergic. So I'm gonna add flax seeds. To my That's mind. a great, great idea. So guys, if you are allergic to nuts, like Melissa, you don't have to add nuts. You can add seeds like flax seeds, chia seeds, sunflower seeds even. And if you're allergic to seeds, you could just omit them, right? Okay, so now that we know what we are cooking and what we are using. Why don't we see why these things are good for us? So everyone jo who's joined, Mary Mitchell, you can join too. Angelica, you can play along. Why don't we play Kahoot? So everybody here can play. Melissa, you can play. So Joel's gonna launch our Kahoot game. And we are gonna learn why these ingredients are great for us. Ooh, so Mary Mitchell says they have strawberries and almonds. Yum. All right, so if you guys are playing Kahoot, you can launch it at www.kahoot.it. Or if you have the Kahoot app, you can use that. And then you're going to want to use this game pin to enter 876-0987. So anybody playing along, you can enter this game pin to get started. 876-0987. We're gonna learn all about some chocolate oatmeal, some fun facts in there, why it's good for us, how and Melissa have joined. All right, we need a little, a little bit more participation there. So if anybody else wants to join, Angelica, you can join. Mary Mitchell has joined as a group. That's great. I'll give you guys another 20 seconds to join. Angelica's in the house. Woo -woo. I see Savitar. All right, this is a good group we have going. It's gonna get competitive. All right, we can start in 10, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's see. Chocolate oatmeal kahoot. Dun, dun, dun. All righty, first question. There's no wrong answer here. We just want to know, has anyone ever put chocolate in their oatmeal before? Either you have, or this will be your first time. I know some of us have. So three of us have, and two have not yet. So you're in for a great yummy surprise. All right, number two, how often can we eat oatmeal and have it still be healthy for our bodies? Only, is it every day? Is it twice a week or just once a month? How often should we have oatmeal? Every single day, guys, you don't have to limit it. Oatmeal is one of the healthiest foods on the planet. So you can have it every day and still be super duper duper healthy. I see chef number one has joined. Chef number one, are you from Mary Mitchell or are you from another school? From another school. Okay, so we have a sign up sheet that I'm going to put in the chat box. Can you sign in? And guys, just a heads up, if you attend and sign in eight times, then you will win a prize. So you definitely want to sign in. All right, did you see the sign-in sheet that I put in the chat? So either now or after Kahoot, you, you wanna put your name, your age, where you're from, your grade, all in there, it'll show you what to put. So you can get marked for your attendance. And then you'll win a prize after eight times. All right, 
So going on to the next Kahoot question. True or false? Oatmeal promotes healthy bacteria in the gut. Is that true or is that false? Does oatmeal promote healthy bacteria in your tummy, in your gut? Hmm, tricky, right? That is so true, you guys. So not all bacteria is bad for us. We actually have some good bacteria in our stomachs and all over our bodies that help us stay healthy. And oatmeal actually helps promote those good, healthy bacteria in your gut. Uh, oh, good job, Hal. But Melissa's number two. What do oatmeal and other fiber-rich foods have in common? Do they raise your cholesterol? Do they ease constipation? Do they help us feel full or help us manage our weight? I think there's more than one correct answer here, you guys. What do we think? Fiber-rich foods, including oatmeal, what do they help with? Yes, they help with three of these things. They don't raise cholesterol. They actually help lower your high cholesterol, but they do also ease constipation. So they help you go to the bathroom. They help us feel full after a meal. And they also help manage a healthy weight. So that's why you wanna have a lot of fiber rich foods. Great job guys. And I see that Nayelis just joined us. Hi Nayelis. Just a reminder, Nayelis, in, in the group, in the chat box, sorry, I'm putting a, a sign-in sheet. You want to sign in because if you sign in eight times, you'll get a prize. So you definitely want to sign in in that sign-in sheet. If you need help, maybe ask a teacher for help, but they're going to help you sign in. You're going to enter your name, your age, your grade, your school, questions like that. You'll see. All right, next question. True or false? Oatmeal raises our blood sugar. Is this true or is this false? And keep in mind, you guys, we don't want a high blood sugar. So that is false. Oatmeal actually helps stabilize and keep our blood sugar at a great normal level. All right, Nayelis, you're hit there with a the group. So if you want, you can sign in for the whole group and put how many kids are cooking there. So if you want to put the name of the school and maybe where it says your name, just put how many people are in your group, okay? In the whole group or have a teacher do it for you, okay? Thank you, Nayelis. All right, next question. Number six, what's in dark cocoa powder that protects us from heart disease? Hmm, so is it phenolic acids? Is it flavanols? I know these are funny words. Sugar or protein? So what can we find in cocoa powder that protects us from heart disease? Phenolic acids, flavanols. This was a tricky one, I will say, but it is flavanols. So that's something in cocoa powder. It's also found in red grapes, in teas, in other fruits and vegetables that actually protects our hearts and keeps our hearts very healthy. So that's why dark cocoa powder is great to keep our hearts healthy. Good job, guys. I know that was a tricky one. Flavanols, remember that word, flavanols. All right, number seven, what are flavonoids? Hmm, so it's kind of the same word, but what are they? Are they an antioxidant, a micronutrient, like a vitamin or a mineral, a type of polyphenol? These are hard. Yep, so there's two correct answers there. So they are a type of antioxidant, and that's why they keep our hearts and our bodies healthy. And they're also a type of polyphenol. So polyphenols are just the big group of these things that keep our hearts healthy. So it's a type of polyphenol. So a lot of scientific words there, flavanol and polyphenol. 
So which ingredient today is high in protein? Is it the milk, oats, berries, or honey? When we think of protein, what do we think of out of these four ingredients? Milk is dairy, right? And we know dairy might be, hmm. It, does dairy have protein? Yes, it does. So out of these ingredients shown on the screen, milk is the one that's high in protein. Good job, guys. And what do we need protein for? For our muscles, for hormones, for our bodies to stay strong and healthy. So that's why the milk in this recipe is gonna do all that because it has protein. All right, next, almost there. Why is it better to make your own oatmeal rather than use a packet? Is it because supporting prepackaged food is bad? Is it to avoid excess added sugars? Is it because the oats are better quality? Or is it to avoid added preservatives? Hmm. There might be more than one correct answer here. So that's right. So not all prepackaged food is bad. So it's not that one. There's some healthy packaged food out there. But you want to make your own oatmeal rather than use the prepackaged things because it's lower in added sugar because you add your own sugar to it so you can control the sugar amount and because it doesn't have any preservatives. Prepackaged oatmeal has a lot of added sugar and a lot of added preservatives that we don't need in our bodies. That's why making your own is the best. And we're gonna see how easy it is to make our own. All right, making things fresh is usually hard and time consuming. Is it always so hard and time consuming? That means it takes a lot of time? No. So I don't know who answered true, but maybe you think so. But I'm gonna show you today just how easy and how quick making things fresh on your own can be. And good job, guys. So let's see, in third place, we have Savitar, good job. In second is Melissa, awesome Melissa. And number one is our winner, Hal. Good job, you smarty pants. Awesome, guys. I hope you guys will learn something about our oatmeal ingredients. But without further ado, what do you say we start cooking? Melissa, are you ready? I am. Is everyone ready to start cooking? So you guys, who is cooking over here? Who is cooking? Nayelis and chef number one, are you guys cooking? Yeah. How about Mary Mitchell, are you guys cooking? So who has the, who wants to be a guest chef? Should we pick a guest chef today? Out of Nayelis and chef number one, do you guys want to be a guest chef? All right, so maybe along the way, we will spotlight, alternate spotlights so everyone can take their turn in the spotlight. So for now, we can just start cooking our chocolate oatmeal. So I'm gonna take you down to our chef zone. And whoever is cooking, if you wanna turn on your camera, that'd be great. So like I said, we have our saucepan, right? Into our saucepan. And this is going to make one serving. So if you're working with a large group, you can make more, just multiply it. But for one bowl of oatmeal, I have a half a cup of oats. We're gonna put all this in our saucepan. So that was a half cup of oats. I have one tablespoon of cocoa powder. I also have, I'm going to add a pinch of salt. So this isn't going to be salty if you don't add too much. So just the pinch, just like that. Because did you know that a little bit of saltiness brings out the sweetness and things, right? Now, Melissa, are you using cocoa powder or something like a Nesquik cocoa? Um, no, I'm using um, like unsweetened cocoa, but like, I know they're similar, but like, what would be the difference? All right, you guys, so 
while you guys catch up, let me explain the difference between a cocoa powder, like an unsweetened cocoa powder, and I know something like a Nesquik that seems like a cocoa powder, but is really a drink mix. So the difference between those two things is that just unsweetened cocoa powder has only cocoa powder in there. If you look at the ingredients, there's only cocoa in there. While if you look at the ingredients on Nesquik or another cocoa drink mix, there's so many more ingredients. So we have cocoa, sugar, preservatives, vitamins added in there. So if you are using something like a Nesquik, it has a lot more sugar and a lot more added preservatives in there than just regular cocoa powder. If that is what you have in the meantime, you're gonna wanna not use the honey or the maple syrup to sweeten the oatmeal. So if you have something like a Nesquik drink mix that already has sugar in it, if you wanna look at the ingredients, then you're not gonna wanna add extra sugar in your oatmeal right now. But if you have an unsweetened cocoa powder, then you might wanna sweeten it a little, a little bit like we're going to with our honey and our maple syrup. But that was a good question. So back down to my saucepan, I have my half cup of oats, one tablespoon of cocoa powder, a pinch of salt, right? I'm going to add my quarter cup of just regular water. And I have a half a cup of milk. And if you guys wanna add a little more water or milk, if you don't like a very thick oatmeal, you can, you can do that. And I'm just gonna stir it a little bit before I take it to the stove. So let's take everyone to the stove. I'm gonna take you guys with me. We're moving to my stove. Now, once you have everything in your saucepan, like I do, you're gonna light your flame to medium, medium high for now, and start stirring. Because you wanna break up that cocoa powder and incorporate everything. And what did I forget to add in here? Melissa, do you know? Um, maple syrup or honey, right? Yes. You caught me, there you go. So we wanna make it sweet. So I'm going to add a half a tablespoon of honey. Now, what are you using? Are you using honey or maple syrup? Could you possibly use both? You can. So I will say if you wanted a stronger, like a maple flavor, which is really yummy, you can just use maple syrup. And if you're using maple syrup, you might wanna add a little bit more. So maybe one tablespoon of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you can use both, just not so much of each. Right. And the main difference is the flavor and the amount of sweetness. Honey is a little sweeter than maple syrup and a little thicker. And now you'll see, we just want to stir and we want to keep stirring until it, you start to see bubbles form because that means it's heating up. Now, why do we want to keep stirring, Melissa? Repeat that. Why would we want to keep stirring our oatmeal? Oh, because it could, you know, bubble up, overflow and, you know, like overcook it and it could stick to the stove so you just exactly wanna... so you don't want things to stick to the bottom of your pan right so you want to keep stirring you yep. can stir in a circle motion you can do a figure eight like i'm doing how's everyone else doing there do we have our oats our cocoa our milk our water our salt and our honey or syrup in our pot to repeat, it's a half a cup of, of oats, one tablespoon of cocoa powder, a pinch of salt, just a tiny pinch, and we have a half a cup of milk, a quarter cup of water, and about a half a tablespoon of honey or a tablespoon of maple syrup. And you'll see, see, that's all we have in there so far. 
So no preservatives, no excess sugar. It's really natural. It's gonna be nice and chocolatey. I don't see. I have bubbles start, starting to form. I don't know if you can see that, guys, but there's some bubbles there. And if you see it's a little too thick, you can add a little more milk or water. I'm going to add a little pinch of water. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Like, uh, would instant oats cook quicker than regular oats? Like, what would be the difference between the two making this? Oh, that's a really good question. So, yeah, something like instant oats as opposed to old-fashioned oats cook quicker, hence the name instant, because they are chopped finer than regular oats. So old fashioned oats are pretty whole. Well, you'll see if you look at instant oats, they're in smaller pieces. So those smaller pieces cook way quicker. So it will cook quicker. If you guys have instant oats, it might cook a little quicker. So you wanna watch out. But now that I have bubbles starting to form, I'm gonna lower my heat a little bit and let that cook for about five minutes until it gets nice and thick. So while that is cooking, how's yours looking, Melissa? Yeah, it's almost finished to be honest, it's almost done. Good, oh, I smell mine already too. Mm -hmm. And what else might you add to your oatmeal to flavor it instead of just cocoa? Um, I, well, I put the maple syrup, of course, and then, um, I'm going to use like berries and I might put honey on top. Ooh. So let me tell you guys, when people say that they don't like oatmeal because it's plain and boring, I think that's one of the best parts about, about oatmeal. Since it's plain, you can flavor it however you want. So like we're adding cocoa. You can add cinnamon, you can add different spices, different extracts, vanilla extract might be nice in there, right? So you can flavor it however you'd like. Even some pumpkin and pumpkin pie spice, play around with the fruits as well. So it's a really versatile food that's not only healthy for us, but can be super delicious if we flavor it, right? Think about like, you know, yogurt, are you gonna have just like a bowl of yogurt or nothing added to it? Or are you gonna put different toppings and different fun things to make it flavorful, right? Yep. So you are using banana, I heard? Yes. So show us how you're going to chop up your banana and your strawberry. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna use like a claw and sort of just cut little pieces. So, and then with the strawberry, I'm gonna do a tunnel to cut it in half because they're kind of big and then split them into two. Awesome. I love your knife skills. So you use your tunnel, your bear claw. Thank you. <laughs> And now my raspberries don't really need to be chopped. So if you're using like a raspberry or blueberry type of thing, you don't need to chop them if you don't want to. They're pretty small already. But if you're using a bigger fruit like Melissa's, like a banana or strawberry, it's a good time to get that sliced up. And then if you're using nuts like I am, you can chop those up as well. So an easy way to chop up your nuts is to just put them on, it on your cutting board. And then we're going to do a technique called mincing or chopping in that I'm going to put the tip of my knife on my cutting board like that, if you could see. And then I'm going to put my hand on top of the blade, on top of the dull part of the blade, and just rock back and forth. So you'll see my walnuts, my healthy walnuts are chopped. Just like that. And rock back and forth carefully. How is everyone else doing? Chef number one and Nyelis, how are you guys doing? I know you're in the same group, right? And how's Mary Mitchell? We're doing good so far. We're still serving. All right. So they're doing well. Mary Mitchell, I know, has some strawberries and almonds that they're going to put on their oatmeal. 
So you guys can go ahead and chop those up. Now I'm gonna take you guys back to my stove so you can see what my cooked oatmeal looks like. So you'll see it thickened up nicely. I like thick oatmeal, so this is great for me. But it, like I said, if you like a thinner oatmeal, you can add a splash of milk or water to thin it out. How's yours looking, Melissa? Good. Um, mine was a little bit done before yours, so I already put it in the plate. Ooh. All right, cool. Yeah, step oh, yeah. ahead. <laughs> then I'm going to follow your lead and put mine in my bowl before we add our delicious toppings. So let me take you guys back down. I love this because who wouldn't want an excuse to eat chocolate for breakfast, right? It smells so good. It smells like a fudge brownie is baking, like a brownie is coming out of the oven. Oh, I made a mess. Okay. I'm going to get a napkin and scoop up my mess. And like I said, oatmeal is versatile. I don't know if you guys caught last week, we made a savory oatmeal. So we did like a savory baked cheesy oatmeal quiche and it was so good. All right, I think I cleaned up my boo-boo. All right, now we're gonna go in with our toppings, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> So I'm going to add my raspberries. I might cut, uh, rip them apart. I think that looks good. I'm going to go in with some walnuts. And then I liked your idea, Melissa, of adding just a drizzle of honey on top. Yeah. I don't think it needs too much because we have some honey in there, but I'm gonna put a little drizzle. <laughs> what do you think? And look how quick and easy that was. I know some of you might still be working on your bowl of oatmeal. I know if we're working in a group, we are working together and having fun. So I will wait for some of you guys. I'll wait for Melissa. Beep, beep. This is mine. If you wanna impress your family on Valentine's Day next month, make this for breakfast. Who doesn't love chocolate, right? <gasps> wow, Melissa. Thanks. How's Nayelis and chef number one doing? How's your oatmeal looking? Let's see it. We're not cooking it yet. You're not cooking it yet? Okay, that's fine. Um, so if you need more time, go ahead. If you have any questions, let me know. But I think you guys are on the right track. How's Mary Mitchell doing? I hope you guys are doing well. Did you chop up your fruit and your nuts? Did you put everything in your saucepan and heat that up to get that cooking? I know learning a new recipe takes some time, but once you guys master this, oh, forget it. It'll take five minutes in the morning. And like I said, feel free to alternate your toppings and your flavorings, add some spices, add some, you know, different fruit and veg vegetables, uh, fruit in there and nuts. And Melissa, while everyone catches up, let's hold ours up one more time to the camera. Smile. And what do you say we try it? 
Yep. Because it smells, oh my goodness, so <laughs> chocolatey. Like I was, I was taken aback. I was, I was like, what chocolate oatmeal, but it tasted, it tastes good. It does. Mm, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> I can never say no, no to chocolate. So. Right. That to start is number one of what's good about this. Number it's two is that, you know, the crunch from the nuts and then the sweetness from the fruit, natural mm -hmm. sweetness, right? Mm -hmm. That's another good thing about adding fruit to your oatmeal. It adds sweetness, so you don't have to add so much sugar, right? True, yeah. So the natural sugar is thick. I feel like if I eat all this, it will fill me up in the morning. I know it. I will be fueled up, energized for school, mm -hmm. and I will be good until lunchtime. Because <laughs> why? The fiber in there, we said, keeps us full. So yeah. the fiber in the oats, the fiber in the fruit, right? Protein. The protein from, from the milk. Good mm -hmm. job. Yes, balanced. Yep, we got some healthy fats from our nuts and our seeds. I know we didn't talk too much about that, but walnuts and flax seeds are so good for us because they have healthy fats, especially omega-3s, which are really good for our heart and for inflammation and in our bodies. So I think that was a good choice. Even nuts like almonds and things like that have a lot of healthy fats. So you can't go wrong with that. It worked Thank out for me. It worked out, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. Big, big bite. Hold on. <laughs> and now we know that flavanols in the cocoa powder are good for our heart too. So yes. I feel good about eating this. Don't you feel good about eating a really delicious, yeah. also really healthy breakfast? It's no guilt. No guilt. Uh -huh. I feel great. I feel energized. And I feel like I can conquer the day. Right? Yep. So I want to see what everybody else is using too, though. I, I know that we're all making chocolate oatmeal, but Nayella's in chef number one. What fruit are you using and what nuts? If you're using nuts, I know you you might be in school, so I don't know if you have nuts, but what fruit are you guys using? I think they're a little busy. Oh, what was that? Banana, banana. Oh, that's a good one. I love chocolate and banana. That's great. I know Mary Mitchell is using strawberries and almonds. So, so far we have chef number one in Nayelis using banana. We have Mary Mitchell using strawberries and almonds. I have raspberries and walnuts. And then you have bananas and blueberries and flax seeds, right? Strawberry. Ah, strawberry, duh. <laughs> it's so, okay. What do you say we take a vote in a bit on who one. So Joel, okay. if you can get that going. Hard decision. Hard decision. I agree. I wish I could one? vote. Is it just the two of you or should I add some? As, you can add, add chef number one, Nayelis and Mary Mitchell. We haven't seen theirs yet, but we know what they're using. So I think we can get a good idea of what that will look like and taste like. Okay. I can't vote because these are all my favorite fruits. I love banana and chocolate. I love almonds. So everyone has a little bit of what I love. And guys, fun fact, if you take all these ingredients and add it to a jar overnight without cooking it, so your oats, your milk, your water, your cocoa, your salt, your honey, and put it in a jar overnight in the fridge, it'll become overnight oats. So that's a type of cold oatmeal dish that you can eat in the morning because it's soaked overnight. So all the flavors kind of come together and it's ready to go in the morning. So it's like a cold oatmeal, really good. Ready for that bowl? Mm-hmm. Here it comes. All right, guys, so take a look at the poll on your screen. Sorry. Mm -hmm. 
And who do we think won? Do we think it's Melissa with her banana flaxseed strawberry oatmeal? Do, is it me? I don't think so. With raspberries and walnuts? Is it chef number one or Nayelis? They're both using, I think, banana. Or is it Mary Mitchell with almonds and strawberries? Hmm. What do we think, guys? Does everyone see the, the poll on their screen? All right, take a vote. Oh my goodness, Melissa is our winner. Thank you, thank you guys. I'm not surprised, that sounds delicious. Thank you. So, while we wrap up, does anyone have any questions about the recipe today? Any comments, concerns? So if we all have it on our stove already, you're gonna, you're gonna heat it on medium heat. And then once the bubbles start to form, you can lower the heat and stir it until it's nice and thick. And that means it's ready. That could take up to five minutes. We went a little, so Mary Mitchell said they went a little too hard on the cocoa powder, but it was good. So extra double chocolate right there. I'm glad it was good. But now you know for next time, if it was too much cocoa powder, you can put a little less. That's how you learn to cook. You make mistakes and you make it better next time, right? But too much cocoa powder isn't the worst thing, I think. Um, but thank you for letting me know. And so what do you say we wrap it up? Pal, if you want to share your screen. If anybody has any questions, make it known now so I can help you guys out. But if you do make your delicious oatmeal and you wanna make it again and again, take a nice picture of it, post it to Instagram. You can tag us in that photo at Family Cook NYC and tag the American Dairy Association, American Dairy NE, and use the hashtag FuelUpTBC so we can see your incredible creations. And then if you want even more recipes and announcements, you can follow me at Family Cook NYC. All right, you guys, in the next week, we are back here the same time, 4.15 p.m. on Tuesday, same place on Zoom. And we are making another great recipe for breakfast. We are making French toast. Uh, uh, another one of my favorites. I can't wait. So thank you, Melissa, for cooking with me. I had a blast. I hope you did too. I did. Yay. Thank you, Mary Mitchell, for cooking. Thank you, Angelica, for joining and watching. Chef number one and Nayelis, I hope your oatmeal comes out fantastic. Does anybody have any last minute questions about their oatmeal? Oh, if you guys are all good to go, Thank you so much. I hope you all enjoy your lovely oatmeal and have a great, great day. I'll see you all next week. Bye, Bye guys. Thank you.